My name is Eric Kamenetsky. I serve as the minister of the Edmonds Unitarian Universalist Congregation in Edmonds, Washington. This service and this sermon is entitled, Y'all Come, Article 2 of the Unitarian Universalist Association of Congregations. Our chalice lighting words are The Heart of Our Faith by Monica Jacobson Tennyson. What is it that calls you here? That calls you onward? That calls you inward? That leads you homeward? What is it that gives you power to make that change, to ask that question, to take that journey? What is it that says you have done well, that asks you to learn more, that brings you to stillness, that holds you up in hard times? It is relationship, the beating heart of our faith. It begins when we share this hour, our truths, this air, our hearts. Come, let us worship together. For a moment's peace, we have these words a reflection on Unitarian Universalism. After I read them, I'll invite you into a moment of quiet and then bring you back with the words, may it be so. But first, this reflection. We draw from our heritages of freedom, reason, hope, and courage building on the foundation of love. Love is the power that holds us together and is at the center of our shared values. We are accountable to one another for doing the work of living our shared values through the spiritual discipline of love. Inseparable from one another, these shared values are. We honor the interdependent web of all existence, we covenant to cherish earth and all beings by creating and nurturing relationships of care and respect. With humility and reverence, we acknowledge our place in the great web of life, and we work to repair harm and damaged relationships. We celebrate that we are all sacred beings, diverse in culture, experience, and theology. We covenant to learn from one another in our free and responsible search for truth and meaning. We embrace our differences and commonalities with love, curiosity, and respect. We work to be diverse, multicultural, beloved communities where all thrive. We covenant to dismantle racism and all forms of systemic oppression. We support the use of inclusive democratic processes to make decisions. We adapt to the changing world. We covenant to collectively transform and grow spiritually and ethically. Openness to change is fundamental to our Unitarian and Universalist heritages, never complete and never perfect. We culti cultivate a spirit of gratitude and hope. We covenant to freely and compassionately share our faith, presence, and resources. Our generosity connects us to one another in relationships of interdependence and mutuality. We declare that every person has the right to flourish with inherent dignity and worthiness. We covenant to use our time, wisdom, attention, and money 
to build and sustain fully accessible and inclusive communities. As Unitarian Universalists, we use and are inspired by sacred and secular understandings that help us to live into our values. We respect the histories, contexts, and cultures in which they were created and are currently practiced. These sources ground us and sustain us in ordinary, difficult, and joyous times. Grateful for the religious ancestries we inherit and the diversity which enriches our faith, we are called to ever deepen and expand our wisdom. Systems of power, privilege, and oppression have traditionally, traditionally created barriers for persons and groups with particular identities, ages, abilities, and histories. We pledge to replace such barriers with ever-widening circles of solidarity and mutual respect. We strive to be an association of congregations that truly welcomes all persons who share our values. We commit to being an association of congregations that empowers and enhances everyone's participation, especially those with historically marginalized identities. Congregational freedom and the individual's right of conscience are central to our Unitarian Universalist heritage. And now, as we enter the quiet, breathe as you breathe with these words. May solace come upon you, power rise within you, and peace settle on your heart. Please enter the quiet. May it be so. The sermon is Y'all Come, Article 2 of the Unitarian Universalist Association of Congregations. Imagine for a moment that you wake up today and instead of it being January 29th, 2023, or whatever day you are watching this, it's January 30th, 1962. So you're awake, but you're also dreaming. And in this waking dream, whether or not you were alive in 1962, you somehow remember who you are here in 2023, and you somehow remember some of the things that happened in 1961. You remember that in 1961, U.S. Cuban exiles and the CIA mounted an unsuccessful attempt to overthrow Fidel Castro that became known as the Bay of Pigs. You remember that in 1961, Yuri Gagarin became the first human in space, pushing the Soviet Union ahead of the United States in the space race. You remember that in 1961, East German authorities closed the border between East and West Berlin and construction of the Berlin Wall began. You remember that in 1961, the World Wildlife Fund was created that John F. Kennedy was sworn in by Chief Justice Earl Warren as the 35th President of the United States, and that that President established the Peace Corps. You remember that in 1961, 
the president advised American families to build bomb shelters. In 1961, Freedom Riders tested the United States Supreme Court decision Boynton versus Virginia by riding racially integrated interstate buses. IBM introduced the Selectric typewriter with the golf ball shaped printing head. And in 1961, Jaguar introduced the E-Type, a vehicle Enzo Ferrari called the most beautiful car in the world. It was a different time for so many things 60 years ago, and it was a different time for our faith tradition too. In 1961, Unitarian Universalism was created from the consolidation of two historically separate Christian denominations, the Universalist Church of America and the American Unitarian Association. Both based in the United States, the new organization formed in this merger is the Unitarian Universalist Association. Today, the Unitarian Universalist Association of Congregations has adopted seven principles, and our congregation, the Edmonds Unitarian Universalist Congregation, which I serve, along with dozens of others, have adopted the eighth principle. But the original principles of the Unitarian Universalist Association, as approved when the Unitarian and Universalist denominations consolidated in 1961, sounded like this. In accordance with these corporate purposes, the members of the Unitarian Universalist Association dedicated to the principle of a free faith unite in seeking. One, to strengthen one another in a free and disciplined search for truth as the foundation of our religious fellowship. Two, to cherish and spread the universal truths taught by the great prophets and teachers of humanity in every age and tradition immemorially summarized in the Judeo-Christian heritage as love to God and love to man. Three, to affirm, defend, and promote the supreme worth of every human personality, the dignity of man, and the use of the democratic method in human relationships. Four, to implement our vision of one world by striving for a world community focused on ideals of brotherhood, justice, and peace. Five, to serve the needs of member churches and fellowships, to organize new churches and fellowships, and to extend and strengthen liberal religion. And six, to encourage cooperation with men of goodwill in every land. And should you think that those six principles just fell out of the sky ready to go, you should know that according to reports from that time, those principles had been a matter of such heated debate that it nearly derailed the merger of the Unitarians and the Universalists at their concurrent but separate preparatory sessions of the two denominations the year before. Back then, the big fights revolved around whether to include phrases like love to God and love to man and a reference to our Judeo-Christian heritage. But those folks came up with a compromise, and that 1961 version was finally hammered out in an all-day, all-night parliamentary, parliamentary negotiation and debate. Coming back to the present day and looking back from here, it's pretty remarkable that the 1984 version of the Principles and Purposes, the ones most of us are most familiar with, that replaced the 1961 wording, were adopted almost unanimously and lasted almost unchanged for 15 years. And it should surprise no one that much of the credit for starting on the long and meandering path that led to the adoption of the reformulated 1984 principles must go to Unitarian Universalist women. Over many years, women, though not women alone, had grown unhappy with the blatantly sexist language of our original bylaws, including a reference to the dignity of man. The 1970s, Years when the U.S. women's movement was gathering momentum saw repeated manhunts to find and remove the most offensive terminology from the UUA bylaws. Removed, for instance, were references to our moderator and our president, indeed to every officer and to all of the ministers as he, though 
mentions of brotherhood and fellowship survived well into the 1980s. There's a whole lot more to this history and the story of that revision to our purposes and principles. Should you wonder if Unitarian Universalist women still make good trouble outside of the women in our congregation and most congregations, this month that this sermon was preached, our congregation gave the entire offering for the month of January to the International Convocation of Unitarian Universalist Women. So, why are we on about this Article 2 stuff anyway? Well, we're working our way through this history of the principles and purposes because we are, as present UUA president, Reverend Susan Frederick Gray writes, currently in a multi-year process to consider changes to our UUA principles and purposes. It's a process that started formally in 2020 when the board of the Unitarian Universalist Association appointed an Article 2 study commission. Article 2 Study Commission is kind of a dry name for such important work, but the reason for the name is that our principles, purpose, covenant, and sources are contained in Article 2 of the bylaws of the Unitarian Universalist Association. So if we already have principles, purposes, covenant, and sources, why do we have to go through this again? And if we changed them in 1984, and they got to be pretty good back then, and if we can finally mostly name a few of those principles, What's the problem we're trying to address here? Well, the changes we made to the 1961 principles and sources were, at that time, huge. Those changes addressed gender, but they also made significant changes that reflected those times. The 1984 changes to the principles and sources removed language of God, man, and brotherhood, added language about interdependence, and added sources reflecting the growing theological diversity shaping our tradition at that time. But just like the times had changed in 1984, necessitating a review of the 1961 principles, so much has happened since 1984 that we need to review them again. By the middle of the 2010s, the ground began to shift again, in much the same way it had decades earlier in response to the women's movement. The Black Lives Matter movement emerged. We lived through the election of the last president of the United States with his racist and misogynistic campaign. And the urgent calls to confront white supremacy culture in our own movement compelled Unitarian Universalists, Unitarian Universalists to ask questions about whether our principles as they were recreated in 1984 fully reflected who we are and who we need to be now. By the time of the 2017 General Assembly of the Unitarian Universalist Association of Congregations, the annual gathering where we do the business of the UUA, there were multiple grassroots efforts to change our 1984 version of the principles. The first effort, which was overwhelmingly adopted, changed the language of prophetic men and women to prophetic people in order to move us, our lived experience, our practices, and our language beyond the gender binary. There was also a proposal to change the first principle from the inherent worth and dignity of all people to the inherent worth and dignity of all beings. That proposal was ultimately tabled as delegate, delegates grappled with the reality that we still had and still have a lot of work to do on living into and up to our first principle as it is, as it applies to people. Discussions of the eighth principle were also taking place, and by 2020, hundreds of UU congregations, including ours, had adopted it. The eighth principle recognizes the need to go beyond aspirational principles by making the ask of us to commit to dismantling systems of oppression. So, though we've gone through this process before, we are going through it again because as Unitarian Universalists, we know more than we knew in 1984. We dream new dreams that we've come to know since 1984, and we yearn to meet new needs that we could not have imagined, articulated, or agreed to in 1984. Now, we have the opportunity to examine the results of the work that's being done by the Article II Study Commission. After two and a half years of study and conversations with thousands of Unitarian Universalists, the Article II Study Commission submitted their final report and proposal to the UUA Board for its meeting that happened on January 20th of 2023. 
The 25-page report of the Article II Study Commission has a lot of good stuff in it, including the proposed revisions to our principles and purposes that Unitarian Universalists will get to work on in the mini-assemblies at the next General Assembly of the Unitarian Universalist Association of Congregations to be held in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania in June of 2023. So the good news is that these proposed, proposed changes don't just happen to us, they happen or they don't happen with our participation. And if you, as a member of a congregation, are a member of a congregation that's in good standing with the Unitarian Universalist Association of Congregations, you and your congregation can send delegates to the General Assembly to participate in the process of discussing, potentially editing, and potentially voting on the proposed revisions to our principles and covenant. You can attend in person in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, or you can attend virtually. It's all available. And if you're wondering what's in that report regarding our purposes and covenant, you can go back and listen to the recording of this service because I read you most of a version of the proposed revision during a moment's peace. So, imagine for a moment that you could enter a conversation to make a difference for the future of our faith tradition by participating in a conversation that will open the way for the future, for our future as congregations, as people, and as a faith tradition turning toward the future with open arms. This next piece is a reflection on the Article II process from my beloved colleague, the Reverend Randy Becker, Unitarian Universalist. I share it with his permission. He writes, Yesterday, as I was listening to Richard Strauss's Metamorphosen, in a class about myths and classical music, I let the musical intertwinings and resolutions wash over me, and I found myself thinking about the Unitarian Universalist Association's bylaws, Article 2. What is the theme of metamorphosis? It is the act of transitioning one's presentations to the world while maintaining one's essence. It is the opposite of both stasis and revolution. Often, we think of it in terms of tadpoles and frogs, caterpillars and butterflies. Why not institutions as well? Modern universalism and Unitarianism arose as notions about the nature of divinity and humanity. Inspired by a diversity of sources, both were influenced, some would say infected, by developing thought through which dogmatic and liturgical Christianity would metamorphosize into something other. In defining that something other, the Universalists in 1790 and the Unitarians in 1825 would form associations organized around stated purposes and principles. But that process of becoming that transition from prototypical to expressed model was never a finished product. Neither Unitarians nor Universalists sought the equivalent to a Nicene Creed. For the Universalists, those statements of beliefs were officially restated at least five times before consolidation. The Unitarians were less prone to changes, but also less expressive of specific principles, and at least three times entertained major changes in how their associated faith would be publicly expressed. In consolidation, the two traditions forged a new set of statements about the intent and content of our faith, statements which have, since 1961, been substantially changed or expanded on at least three occasions. Now, we have reached a new point of metamorphosis with the Article II proposals. In a tradition that has always embraced the changing nature of our identity, this is not surprising. It was, in fact, to be expected. However, like many a tadpole worrying about the loss of that tail, like many a butterfly missing the safety and familiarity of the chrysalis, many of us have longings for what has been familiar words and sentiments. To a majority of those in the pews and many of those in the pulpit, our principles and sources have become touchstones, expressions of the only Unitarian Universalism known, and their loss requires us to look more to what we are becoming. Statements of principles always lag behind progressing commonly held beliefs, rather than death grip the past. 
I, for one, do not wish to become a stillborn promise wrapped tightly in a chrysalis that will never open to its future of possibility. So, like that reluctant proto-butterfly, I worry about what is to be. I am not sure I like all of the world that is being presented as my future. I consider a focus on love to be both reductionistic and trite. I am not sure a statement of principles should contain a graphic. I am anxious about a future without an explicit statement of sources, sources essential to my understanding of the anti-racism, anti-oppression, multicultural work that is before us. However, I will still accept the life outside the safe, familiar milieu of the past, a life in which we take agency in shaping our shared future. Such change is essential if our movement is to remain both vital and relevant. Thus ending the reading. This is a conversation in Unitarian Universalism that is happening now, and we can be a part of it. We are the ones we've been waiting for. Reverend Susan Frederick Gray, President of the Board of Trustees of the Unitarian Universalist Association of Congregations at this time, sent out an email that said, this spring, congregational delegates and the UUA board can propose amendments to the Article II proposal. That proposal and amendments will be considered at the General Assembly in Pittsburgh this June, and a majority vote is required to continue Article II's consideration at the General Assembly in 2024. If any of the delegate amendments are accepted, and if the proposal receives majority approval, then the Article II Study Commission will make any necessary changes to create a final draft for consideration at General Assembly in 2024. The final proposal for Article II will require a two-thirds majority vote at the General Assembly in 2024 to be adopted. End quote. Beloveds, I suggest we engage. Let's get involved. Let's help create this future. It's ours. Let's be responsible for it. Thank you for joining us today. Good luck in your work. Amen. Hashe. May it be so.